Well, after March Madness was canceled last year in the pandemic, the tournament officially tips off tonight with the uh, first four play-in games, and we cannot contain our excitement here at Yahoo Finance. So we are bringing March Madness to the market with Stock Madness, and we recruited two of our top market players to go head-to-head -head over the next couple weeks with eight stock picks each. We've got Gerber Kawasaki, Wealth and Investment Management CEO, uh, and President Ross Gerber's picks going up against the picks from Payne Capital Management President Ryan Payne. Both gentlemen joining us now to advance their picks in the bracket, beginning with the left side, 30 seconds each to do so. The winning pick will be judged by Akiko and myself. And gentlemen, may the best stock picks uh, win here. Up first, we got Ross Gerber's favorite in Disney going up against Ryan Payne's J.P. Morgan. And Ross, we'll start with you. Well, let's see. I mean, Disneyland's opening this month. Uh, you got theme parks, you got hotels, you got eventually cruises starting again. And they've got the Netflix, of uh, the next Netflix with Disney Plus. But when you look at their global domination of streaming and now the opening up of the theaters on top of the theme parks, Disney's in a prime position to profit like they've never before. All right, I like this, the succinctness of that, of that pitch, Ryan. <laughs> Simple. Well, first off, <laughs> Ross, you got 158 times earnings baked into that stock. That's 158 years worth of profits. That's so I'm going to go cheaper, faster. man. I think uh, you got to ski where the you got to skate where the puck's going to be. And we just talked about interest rates going up over 10 year over 1.7 percent today. Who benefits more than the banks? And the banks are dirt cheap, unlike Disney, Ross. Uh, we got J.P. Morgan. Hey, training you know what? J.P. Morgan's had its day in the sun. It's over, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> at 14 think, times uh, forward earnings the that was it the moves the over the interest, interest rates moves over yeah this was the toughest it, to me this is the toughest one to call because these ones are both good picks i just put them here because i've I been buying jp morgan to be honest yeah they're both phenomenal <laughs> picks but because jp morgan oh, today, uh, all time, because jared just highlighted the fact that jp morgan's up four percent today i'm going to give the edge there I we'll know, let jp I, morgan I advance to kiko you have the next all right uh this is an unusual round the next one Callaway Golf. And Verizon, guess who's the lower seed? Verizon here. Uh, Ross, your first pitch. Callaway Golf is, is killing it. Golf is a huge winner in the pandemic, and they just merged with Top Golf. And Top Golf is the future of golf. It's created a digital, fun social experience for, for people who want to get out and play. So it's opened up the entire market to golf for younger people who don't want to play a four hour or five hour round. So the combination of the products, as well as now the experience of Top Golf, on top of the technology of Top Tracer and the fact they own a video game, a golf video game too, it's a wonderful synergy between these businesses. We're super excited about the future for Callaway and golf. Uh, Ryan, Verizon something tells me no your future. pitch is going to be around 5G no and Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> well, first off, I agree with Callaway Goff. You know, great stock, and the market already knows it because it's already tr trading at 50 time, 52 times forward earnings, and it's already up 300%. So I think you know, a lot of that value that Ross just talked about is probably wrung out of the stock. So I'm going to go old school again. I'm going to go with Verizon, which trades at a very modest 11 times earnings Grandpa. versus Ross's pick at Grandpa. 52 times earnings <laughs> and a four and a half percent dividend in a yield starved world. And 5G is coming out. They're going to have modest revenues in the market, I believe, is going to start caring about profits in the today, not profits that are 300 years out or 50 years out, in all fairness, with Callaway right now. Uh, guys, I don't know if I'm allowed to go against our parent company, but uh, I'm going to give the edge to Ryan. <laughs> all right, I'll allow it. So Verizon Great makes program. a move there. Awesome. Like Yahoo Finance. <laughs> the other thing, the okay, well, so let's move on to this other matchup. It's a conflict Garth of interest here. <laughs> let's move on to Yahoo's this the other best matchup. Thing they got. Which includes, this one includes, Ross, one of your favorite picks over the last few years here in Tesla, as well as an interesting play uh, from Ryan and Mitsubishi Corp. Uh, Ryan, we'll start with you this time because Mitsubishi is a, a name we don't talk about often. It's not. It's one of the picks that Warren Buffett for Berkshire Hathaway bought back in September. And these are kind of like trading companies in Japan. So they're conglomerates. They've got lots of different assets like technology, financial uh, exposure, infrastructure. Uh, so basically, with the reopening of the economy, you know, you're know, you going to see cyclicals do the best. And this is also a play against the dollar, because if the dollar weakens, which I think it will continue to weaken, foreign currencies do better. And the beauty of this stock is it trades for less than price to book. This is classic Warren Buffett, meaning the assets are worth more than it trades in the open market today. This is an absolute long-term winner. And Ross, you on Tesla? I mean, we're, we talked a lot about Tesla, but it's I one mean, of those names that get hit I mean, all the time. You're comparing 
like like a dead old rock against one of the most exciting <laughs> companies in America. You know, Jap Japan's probably the most boring place to invest in in in, in the world. Um, but Tesla is probably one of the most exciting investments in the world. When you look at disrupting energy and transportation in the same place, yes, you know, we seem to have these themes. I'm a growth investor and and he's a value investor. And I think there's a place for value in the stock market right now, but that's a temporary rotation. When you look out a year, the growth names will be back and they'll be booming over the next 12 months. So so I I, I don't dislike his picks. I just think that that's a temporary move in the market that isn't going to last. What concerns <laughs> me, Ross, is that <laughs> the management team was selling stock while it was up eightfold in the last couple of months, whereas investors were buying. Just saying, you know, you know Elon Musk they got to eat, man. They got to eat food there. You know, they get paid all in stock. <laughs> but I love this, the stock. I, why I, am I selling? One. To, me, to me, I like how different these pitches are. This one, just because I like uh, both. You know, we've I, talked you know, a lot honestly, about I'd Tesla. I'll, I'll, I'll give the edge to portfolio. Tesla on this one. I'm going to advance. I'm going to advance Tesla on this one, Akiko. Okay, Zach, I feel like there, you're right, Ross. There is a theme here. This is another new versus old matchup, some would say. Penn Gaming versus Exxon. Uh, Ryan, you're first up here. Who do you have? Um, again, I'm shocked at this 50 times forward earnings on Penn Gaming and a 1,500% return over the last 12 months. Um, you know, again, we got to ski or skate, rather, to where the puck is. Exxon Mobil, if you think about the reopening of the economy again, and I talk about this on my podcast every week at bebullish.com, uh, basically is global consumption. Energy is going to be the most sensitive to global consumption. The whole world's going to reopen. Oil's o already over $60 a barrel, and no, no one's going to benefit more than that than oil companies. Exxon's get very high fixed costs. So every day that oil goes up, as profits to the bottom line, and money this year is going to flow towards where the profits are the best. And that's going to be in things like financials, like I mentioned before, and energy is the other play, and also getting a 5.86% dividend. So can't beat it. Ooh. My grandpa would love you, except he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> These stocks are just as dead as my grandpa. And Exxon, I mean, if you read the Wall Street Journal today, there's no demand for oil. And, and you know, they're hiding oil just to keep prices high. Um, but on the Never other hand, Penn again, Ross. booming. Betting against Dave Portnoy and Barstool Sports is the biggest mistake an investor can make in their entire lives. I've gone head to head with this guy. He's an unstoppable force. He he made me a believer. We're up big on this on the stock. I, I'm a buyer. We've got March Madness. Um, they they just opened live in Michigan. Michigan's favored to go to the Final Four. Um, I'm a big big believer in the things that used to be illegal that are now legal. And online gambling is one part of this business, but they own 41 casinos. And this is a reopening play to when people, when people are going out now and they're gonna go to local casinos because international travel is gonna be very limited on the short and medium term. So we're very bullish on the casino sector. Penn is a great play. You're gonna see massive growth in revenue and earnings over the next 12 months. Ryan, our very own Jared Blickery just reminded me WTI is having its worst day in four months. So I'm not sure your case holds here, but I'm going to give this one to Ross. I think he's convinced me Ooh. about, it's, I mean, if we're talking don't, about don't get in the, the, the long-term potential. I just like the fact that we're getting booed on our own exactly. show now, Akiko. Akiko. Personally, I, I enjoy getting booed on our own show. But I, all right, so let's go to the next round here because we advance uh, Disney and we advance Verizon. So, Ross, you're going to be taking the Disney side. That would give Ryan the Verizon side here in another strange matchup. But let's start with you, Ross, on Disney. You know, Disney is such a well-managed company. And Bob Chapek and Iger have proven there's nothing worse that could happen to Disney in the pandemic. So the argument about past earnings is just not relevant because they were earning over $6 a share before this started. So what, now when you go backwards and say, now I got 100 million plus subscribers and everything's open again, maybe I'm gonna do eight to $10 in earnings in the next year or two. And at 200 bucks, that makes Disney about the right price. So I think Disney is expensive, but I think if you think long-term, they are the dominant player in the entertainment industry. I think they make a move on the theaters next, and they've got a totally vertically integrated company with all ways to experience the synergies of their brand. They couldn't be in a better position. I agree with right, Ross in the sense that it's a great, I agree, it's a great company, and I think it is priced as a great company. But unfortunately, that's years worth of growth. And if we're looking to buy today to make the most money, 
again, you've got to look towards like what's going to be happening in the next couple of months. And again, we're going to have GDP growth that's like astronomical. If you look at the economy over the next couple of months, we're going to have 7% growth this year. That's the best since 1983. Ross, we're going to party like it's the 80s, and the banks are going yeah, to Yeah, at Disneyland. We're going to Disneyland. We're not going to get on a phone. We're not going to be using 5G. Ironically, ironically, about this matchup, the only reason I have Disney Plus is because it came through my FIO subscription. So it, it is a good kind of pairing Listen, here, but Verizon given the fact the that Verizon when you cancel your subscription, up, the stock will never go company, up. Our company, Verizon, down 5% year-to-date. Uh, Disney, we've heard from a lot of guests on the reopening trade, both sides of the trade. I'm going to give the edge here to Disney. So the last matchup we have here, I don't know how this is going to work. Tesla versus Penn Gaming. This is actually a matchup I'd, I'd want to see in person. Dave Portnoy versus Elon Musk. <laughs> Ross, who do, you, who do you pick in this situation? Do I have to, I have to argue against myself? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to have Ryan make a pick too. You know, this is really unfair because, you know, actually I, I, I'm super bullish on Tesla and Penn Gaming, but but you know, relative quality of companies, obviously Tesla's in a class of its own and it's my largest holding. And, and I can't say anything but positive about what I see the future now with the truck business launching this year, this truck industry is so ripe for disruption. I, you know, Jerome is gonna get this semi truck out and it's a game changer. I think by the end of the year, Tesla's gonna look, uh, be a higher stock and look real good by right now. Okay, Ross, I can sense that you're conflicted between these two stocks. I am. Ryan, I am, because I, I really one, like the casinos. Neither of these were your I pick. I really like casinos right now. <laughs> Ryan, which one do you go with? I look like what's less horrible here. Um, I have to hold my nose and <laughs> buy either of these picks here. It's like, okay, let's buy the tippy top of the market. Like, what can we even buy the more obvious trade now? It reminds me of the dot-com bubble when everything got priced to the world was going to move to the internet. We were Come gonna on, cut you weren't even cords. that old. <laughs> <laughs> I was around, man. Uh, I actually worked for a dot-com company, my first job out of college, but I digress. Okay, okay. I see a little gray <laughs> in your beard. I, I, <laughs> there's a little gray. That's why, that's why uh, I wanted to pair you guys yeah. today, though, too, because a lot of these picks are very much what we've been talking about the last few weeks, is growth versus value, and we're going to continue right. this in the next round. On the other side of the bracket, we've got some interesting reopening plays, including Ryan's Carnival Cruises going up against Ross's uh, MGM pick that's done well over the last year despite the pandemic. So a lot more to get into. But I want to thank you guys both for coming on here in, in week one of Stock Madness as we await March Madness. Ross Gerber and Ryan Payne, thanks again to you both.